Buenos Dias YouTube. It is the 8th of May, so you know what that means. It's just another great day in America. I got a kel P11 here today. Uh, okay box that it comes with. Got a sticker and some other stuff. The instruction booklet is actually pretty good on uh, most of the kel -Techs. They give you color pictures inside and um, parts diagrams and all that. Got a trigger lock and then we have the gun. I have been trying to get a P11 for a while and uh, I think it will make a pretty good carry gun because you get the same size and capability of a Glock 26 for half the price or you know less than half the price. It also weighs even less. So this thing holds 10 plus 1 and uh, weighs pretty much nothing. Um, it's the lightest 10 plus 1 9mm handgun ever. Um, <clears throat> I'm familiar with kel stuff. I've actually got a P32 that is a really great deep concealment gun. So this is just pretty much the big brother. Looks just like the P380 and the P32, but you get a uh, slide stop or a slide release. So that's something kind of cool, a little bit different from the other guns there. I'm going to use a spent casing to pull this little guy out right there. But... um. One thing I noticed immediately was the sights. The sights are, or the, actually the rear sight at least, is terrible. Um, the front sight's okay. Both are plastic. But you can see the molding marks really bad. I mean, they just look like garbage. I'm going to see what I can do. I don't know. I may clean this thing up, make it look nicer, and then um, put some fiber optics in there. Or I may see what they have on the aftermarket to replace this thing. Uh, this the P11 has a pretty cool feature just like if you're familiar with the SIG, the SIG P320 and 250 and a couple of the other ones have a system where you can take out the fire control group um, and I actually have a fire control group here. So you push out uh, three pins or sorry yeah three pins and then the takedown pin and there's your fire control group. Pretty neat. So you can get new grips or frames or whatever you want to call it without an FFL. That's the uh, fire control group, and it, group right there and it weighs nothing. Really cool. From just handling the gun right here out of the box and uh, pulling the trigger a few times, the trigger is absolutely awful. It's a little bit sharp here on the edge and the hook really kills the edge of your finger. Um, the break also is a little bit painful. You get kind of that kickback that you feel with some, uh, sometimes you get like with, like, like with an AK. It really kind of hurts the finger. But anyway, let's take a look inside and um, get this thing cleaned up and ready for some range time. So the first thing I do with all my guns before I shoot them is take them apart and clean them. Because you never know, you know, what could be left in there from the machining processes. We're gonna lock our slide back, take an empty shell case, stick it right there, and pry it outwards like this. Little takedown pin comes right out. Well, then we're supposed to be able to take the barrel out or the slide out. It doesn't want to come right now. Huh, interesting. So there we go. We have a polymer guide rod with two springs. Internal spring and then an external spring. They sell different spring power kits for these guns. Uh, harder weight spring, which will make it a little bit harder to, uh, you know, pull the slide on but it's supposed to absorb some of the snappy recoil. You can also get metal guide rods for this gun in all the uh, P series or I uh, sorry like the all the same guns that are framed like this like the 32 and the 380. But what I've seen in the past is with the metal guide rods it'll actually start to wear out this hole up here because of the very steep angle like that and it'll start to wall that thing out so polymer is good enough I've never ever seen 
one of these break. Never even heard of it online. So I don't think a metal one is necessary. Slide inside. Looks good. I don't see any uh, metal shavings. Looks like it's got oil in there, which is cool. Seen a lot of dry firearms from manufacturers. It did not come with a spent test case, but you can see some brass right here. So you know it's been test fired. Cool. Looks good overall. The barrel, um, I, I've had issues with, issues with these in the past rusting out on the exposed section here, uh, carrying the gun every day. So I'm definitely going to get at least the barrel Cerakoted. But um, looks good. Rifling looks good. Pretty thick. Pretty thick rifling. A lot of the guns in this price range, like say, um, or maybe even a little bit cheaper, like a Jimenez or something like that. The rifling in those barrels is pretty much non-existent. But kel pretty good about that stuff. In here, all the machining looks really good in the fire control group. Looks very nice. Frame looks good. There's not any extra polymer hanging off anywhere from the molding. On the other used kel there was some extra polymer hanging off um, the trigger down here from the molding process. You can just cut it off with a razor blade. But overall pretty cool. Just wanted to give you a breakdown before we go put some rounds through this thing. They come with a 10 round Metgar magazines. They also sell uh, extended magazines and I think I'm, I think there's another company that you can get um, that will give you even more capacity. But yeah, there you go. Just wanted to give you a quick tabletop. We'll go do some shooting. All right, I've got my kel P11 out here. Gonna go through the first rounds of break in. See how it goes. We've got everything oiled up and cleaned up inside the gun. I'm not going to be shooting at a target today. I've just got a steel plate set up out there. Magazines here are uh, 10 rounds. I'm just shooting some, uh, some of my reloads here. I'm going to look at the P11 before we start. stuff. All right, let's get going. First malfunction. The slide locked back. Slide lock is in place. Didn't feed around. Magazine seated all the way. Let's give it another try. Same malfunction here, slide locked back.
same failure, uh, slide lock back. So that's, uh, let's see, on the 60, 59th round, we lost one of our rear sights there. A little white dot came. All right, this magazine here is going to make it 100 rounds, and then I'm going to test out some of my uh, defensive carry ammunition, see how it handles that. Slide lock back. ammo that I'm going to test uh, that I like to carry in 9mm is uh, Civil Defense, 50 grains. This stuff is blazing fast. I can't remember the exact um, feet per second, but this stuff is super, super quick. Throws out some big fireballs too. So this is the stuff I would like to carry if I can get the gun to be reliable. See how it likes it. like it fit just fine. I'm gonna have to do some more shooting past the initial uh, 100 round break-in to see if the issue of the slide locking back is gonna work itself out. Um, probably need to take a little deeper look at it and see what's going on with that and then address the rear sight before I carry this thing. But there's a first look. Um, you know I'm a little bit disappointed in the performance about the slide locking back over and over again. I think it happened four times total. The slide just locked back when there was a round still uh, ready to go. Um, and then I had that rear sight thing fall off there. So we'll see, I'll do some more testing, see if this thing just needs some more break in before it works good. But um, we'll definitely revisit this gun as we shoot it some more. I really want the kel P11 to be good. It seems like we had um, a couple problems today and I hope they get better. Hopefully it was just break in stuff. But um, I'm going to take this thing down and we're going to take a look inside and see what it looks like um, after 110 rounds of break-in. Now one thing I did notice as far as exterior was I lost a little, lost a little white dot over there. So that sucks. Let's pull the slide apart and uh, take a look at the inside. See if we have any strange wear or anything like that going on. Take a look at that. See that mark there? There's one on the other side just like it. Looks like the uh, bottom of the barrel lug here is making a little indention. Not a big deal. Just like, you know, cam pin, the cam pin gouge on some AR-15 upper receivers. I think once it works its way in there, it's going to stay just like that and not cause any problems, but we'll see. 
I remember my Keltec P32 has the same little marks. And then we've got a little bit of finish wear on the inside of here, right where my pinky is. Okay, right in here, you can see where the hammer is rubbing the frame a little bit, or rubbing the uh, housing for the fire control group right here. And it's wearing the finish off a little bit. See right inside there? Here, watch that. See when I pull the hammer back? I can feel it. I can feel it rubbing on that surface, but this is aluminum. So I have a feeling once that wears in, it's not going to get any worse. Have our normal wear right in here. Looks like this spot here is starting to flat out just a hair. And then we have some wear up here in the very top. All really normal. Looks like we have some wear here too. And what's interesting is um, the way the front sight attaches to the slide, there's two little pins that go into two holes. Let me see if I can point them out. Uh, there we go. Um, here and here. And I noticed before I started shooting, they were sticking out just a tiny bit. Now they're perfectly smooth from firing it. The barrel definitely wore them in. And we have a little bit of finish wear here at the front. But nothing, uh, nothing crazy. So, overall it looks pretty good. I'm going to have to figure out why the slide is locking back um, when I still have rounds in the magazine. So, we'll do some more shooting, do some more break-in on it. Uh, the cheaper pistols like this sometimes require a little bit more break-in. Uh, well, you know what? I've seen it go both ways. Even, you know, the really high-quality pistols with really high tolerance, like, like say, a Kimber, break-in on those is 500 rounds. So we'll give it some uh, we'll give it some leniency as far as it could, the couple malfunctions that we had. I think I had either three or four uh, in the first hundred rounds. Uh, but anyway, besides that, you know, and the sight problem, everything else looks all right. I'm going to keep testing here and uh, hopefully see if this is going to be a good carry option. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and uh, stay tuned for some more videos on this gun.